Okay, hello and welcome along again to the latest instalment of the ICT video blog. Uh, Dave Robson here again with Becca Dare. Hello. Hello, and today we're going to have a quick chat about trade-based financial crime. So, um, Becca, if you could sum it up quite quickly, what's all the fuss about in respect of trade-based financial crime? Well, I think um, all AML practitioners, regardless, Dave, whether they work in trade finance or not, have probably seen the heat and noise around trade finance and particularly trade-based money laundering. We've had the, um, well, so over the years, recent years, we've had several very high-profile reports from the Financial Action Task Force. Uh, we've also had, uh, you know, 2012 being a seminal report going back all the way to 2006. We've had the recent uh, Asia Pacific Group report, and I think really the the the, the massive growth we've seen in, in the sheer volume of international trade. I mean, statistics really show from you know the mid '90s up into the, the early 2000s dramatic growth in volume. And of course, you know, most recently we've had in the UK the FCA's thematic review looking at trade-based money laundering in banks. Uh, their thematic review, which which found you know some fairly significant issues. Okay, and to be fair, it's although there's been quite a lot of focus on the money laundering aspects of it, it's not just about money laundering, is it? I mean, money laundering is a precursor to a, or a result of perhaps of a number of other events as well. Yeah, so I think um, you know again, you know, when, at its heart, if you talk about trade-based money laundering per se, you're talking about two key pillars, really, aren't you? You're talking about there must be collusion. You know, there must be two parties working either side, either through what we call open account um, trading or, you know, more structured trade finance products. But there must be collusion. And there also must be a transfer of value. And that's the core pillars of what we're, what we're about here. But obviously, linked to the issue of transferring value, i.e. money laundering, we've also got all the associated issues. Fraud is a huge issue. You know, I, I, We've seen recently, you know, information coming out of the International Chamber of Commerce about the scale of, of documentary trade finance fraud, how easy it is to manipulate banks by, by forging and, and, and producing counterfeit documents. We're also, of course, to often talking about linked issues such as bribery and corruption and, you know, by definition, often potentially about issues like dual-use goods and the growth of proliferation financing and, and potentially sanctions breaches as well. So... Again, it's, it's artificial, Dave, just to look at it in the context purely of money laundering. We're talking about a wider range of financial crime risks as well. Okay, that, that clears up a bit then. So, I mean, you, you mentioned there about proliferation and, and dual-use goods. So we're really linking to the terrorism side of it as well then, are we? Definitely. I think, I think what we're talking about there is, in particular, dual-use goods. What are we worried about? Nuclear, biological, chemical goods. Goods that could be used in legitimate manufacturing to, say... You know, build a uh, part of a, a, a some medical equipment in a hospital that could also be used to build a nuclear reactor. So, of course, the challenge for banks in particular is, you know, their trade finance people in the middle office and front office are not nuclear physicists. So, how do we give them on a risk-based approach enough training and enough skills to to manage the risk of dual-use goods? And that's that's a hell of a challenge. Um, but yeah, de definitely, that's, that's very much um, up the global agenda at the moment. Okay, well again, you mean you've just touched on my next point, which is really, how do the risks around trade-based financial crime and money laundering work? I mean, do they have a different sort of set of systems and controls and knowledge requirements for people who are trying to prevent it? Definitely. I think, you know, having now, you know, worked with a lot of trade finance institutions uh, and, you know, the, the, big, the big banks, what's absolutely clear, in fact, if you trace it back to the financial crime um, uh, provisions uh, coming out of the Wolfsburg Group, you look at the FATF reports and the FCA's themed review, generic AML training for people doing this, this type of work is not good enough anymore. You know, by definition, you're talking about trade finance, you could be talking about, you know, large stacks of paper very specific risks and indicators to spot things like over-invoicing, uh, ghost shipments, mislabeling of goods. Uh, you know, it's not enough to just talk about the generic concepts of AML. It, you know, and, and again, what the UK regulator has been saying is that banks have been reasonably good at screening trade finance 
uh, payments against sanctions, but not so good at giving their people the skills to actually detect suspicious activity. I mean, you know, for example, Dave, it could be that you know it's just something about the nature of the, the description of goods on a bill of lading or a commercial invoice uh, that could lead to an inconsistency being identified, which could ultimately indicate the transfer of value through, say, under invoicing. So, again. It's not about just relying on people with lots and lots of experience to tell their colleagues about the cases to look out for. I think we've all got to raise our skill set through training that's meaningful based on actual you know, plausible case studies that feel real to help us detect this financial crime. Okay, fantastic. I mean, a quick, quick advertorial at the end then, Becca. How, how are we getting on with the special certificate at the moment? That's adding value, I understand, to a, lot, a number of our delegates. It is, it is. And, and you know seamless work there Dave thank uh, you because I think you know I've been really heartened by the the, the, the the you know massive amounts of interest and take up we've already had uh, on our new specialist certificate qualification in uh, money laundering risk in trade finance we ran a public course on the back of our ICA uh, conference in London last week fantastic uh, attendance there you know and really interesting to hear both practitioners in trade finance and non practitioners who want to broaden their knowledge you know, getting a lot out of that session. So, you know, if you're interested in the details, you know, come and have a look at the ICA website. There's there's plenty of details there, uh, and you know, I'm really hard to see it, it it rolling out with 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 good success. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Becca. Basically, it's a hot topic, and it doesn't look like it's going to uh, go away anytime soon, does it? So, mm. okay, great. Well, thanks very much for running us through that, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks very much, Dave. Take care.